Hi everyone and welcome to our Casa Sweet Casa. Today I'm going to be talking about what homeschool planner I used and how I used it. So talking about homeschool planners, when I started uh, homeschooling, our first first month starting out, I was just using pen and paper for my homeschool planning and that is fine. Uh, I just actually drew out the lines for the chart myself and just wrote in for each of my girls what we we're going to be doing. Um, I had a six and a ten year old starting out, they'd been in regular school. For the whole life when we were homeschooling and then I just started homeschool planning for the first time and that's what I did pen and paper and you can definitely still do that pen and paper or do your own grids uh, but when we were going to start in August our first uh, formal whole school year of homeschooling I wanted to get something a little bit formal I love anything that is an office supply or a notebook so I just had homeschooling, another reason to get another planner, another notebook, and I definitely, definitely did not want to let that uh, pass by, so I wanted to get a homeschool planner. And um, so I looked, did my due diligence and looked around, saw wonderful videos about planners and how all the homeschool moms were doing it. And I saw many that were uh, do-it-yourself planners. And I knew that that was probably best for me, do-it-yourself. But starting out, I kind of wanted to go with uh, something ready-made to see how it would work out. So after doing my research, I decided on the Ultimate Homeschool Planner, a planning system designed by Deborah Bell. And it was, uh, it's by Apologia. I'm trying to remember exactly what were the reasons why I picked it. Uh, I liked that it was large. Um, I liked that it had some inspiring quotes. It has a, I'm going to flip the camera in a minute and show you uh, closer, but uh, just to give you a, a run through on the reasons why I decided on it. Um, I liked that it was made for homeschooling. That was new to me. And it had a uh, year layout like this grid it had instructions on how to use it as you'll see there are empty pages and I'll talk about that and it had a, a year view I mean monthly and then um, it was already oh I, I think this was my favorite thing about it and I'll show you uh, I like that it these were blank these were blank and these were blank, so I could do my own, and they were weekly. And so I liked that it was uh, Christian and it would have quotes and, and things like that. So I thought uh, that would be useful. And so what I decided to do for this video is that I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to kind of combine uh, how I used this planner and why I'm uh, looking for a, a different option and how it worked for us and also I'll show you how I used my uh, Spanish lesson materials that are not made for homeschooling how I planned them out in this planner all right so why am I showing you my girls desks well my planner is a dual or triple purpose planner I don't do student planners at least not yet and so there it is on between their desks that's how we use it I would plan it out and fill it out what we were doing and then I place it in the middle of where they would be sitting. And my oldest goes on this side and my youngest goes on this side and that's how I would lay it out. Uh, right now and for now I'm not interested in having to fill out uh, planners for each of them, at least until they can do their own. So I use my planner to let them know what they have to do for that day. Your moms might cringe, some of you, to let your precious planner uh, in the hands of your kids, but it hasn't been that bad. I've only gotten paint on some pages at least once. Sorry if that makes you worried, but I, uh, they've been good about it so far. And it works for me just to have it all in one place and I sit between them most of the time. And then we both, all three of us have on hand what we're gonna be using. So one of my favorite things, and I'll mention this at the end, but one of my favorite things about this planner is that it, it's in blank. 
this the both all of these fields they come in blank so I came up with my own way of doing it and this is just to show you how I did it um, this page is for my six-year-old and this page is for my ten-year-old and that's how we we I have the days here and then every day they would look all the way here for this day so my uh, a second grader would know that on this side was hers and then my fifth grader would know that this side was hers and then at the bottom I would write the together su together subjects see they have a Monday science Tuesday history I would write the together subjects uh, down here and art most Fridays would go here and then on the side I would write they're both at the same lesson for handwriting so I just write it here and then what read aloud we were doing and we finished that week. So quickly, I wanted to show you uh, how I make my Spanish materials work and how, how I plan it out. Uh, on what we used last year, that video I did, I explained that we used uh, Español Ediciones SM, Aprender Juntos. This is the book we use for Spanish. Uh, my girls are, uh, Spanish is their first language. This is not a book to learn Spanish. You need to, the kids, this is for Spanish speaking kids, uh, just so you know, it's not for learning Spanish. So this is uh, what would be a lesson for grammar. It is not a homeschooling book. So this is how I, I use it. It's uh, divided by units and it's made for a, a school classroom, made for a school and a large group of children with a teacher. And so it doesn't have that much practice between each lesson. It's just, it goes on because it assumes that the teacher will be doing something else until the kids know how to do whatever she's explaining. So it's not divided like homeschool, wonderful homeschool materials that are made for, made for five days a week. The lessons are all divided up. It is definitely not that way. So what I do is that I see once she's done or uh, I know that she understood uh, last lesson we did, uh, this would be, uh, so I look up what's the topic, and then I always, when it's the new thing, I always plan, uh, here's the, the theme of the, of the lesson, and I always do a day of presenting the theme and practicing, kind of orally or on our whiteboard. So I always plan a day for that, instead of going right into what's in the book. And then if she's fine with that, uh, we move on to uh, using the actual book. So I mark, I write down what page she would be doing, and then we usually do this together, unless on the first day she really got it right away. Some days she could do it on their own. So that's those are the days that I, the, I mean the page numbers that I wrote down for her. And after that day, you can see that I then use the workbook. This uh, Spanish book, uh, you can get a workbook too which is usually a very short page, just one page of extra practice, but we definitely use it. And she uses it as a practice. I mark out what she needs help with. And, um, and then we, I know that she needs extra practice. So I, I do a review, so that means review. And I usually look something up online and get a printable page. There are not that many resources for Spanish speakers, but I can usually easily find one and I always write down the website where I found it. And then if she's ready by this time that week to end with that lesson, I give her kind of like a test. She doesn't even know it's a test, but I make my own uh, sheet or two of her uh, finishing up that lesson. So that's how we use it. So uh, for some things it's a little redundant, but I always like to write down, write down what they're doing. Like for example, uh, my oldest does teaching textbooks and I just write down what lessons she's on. And after this, I got her to write what score, what score she got on that lesson. So I know that she's doing fine or if she needs to review it again. And I write down everything that they do in English. So I know that when I look for another resource for planning, that I need a uh, good space. I like having it all out because it's also a visual thing. It's not just about my notes. I also use it for them to see what they need to do and to see what they have for the rest of the day. So I like to have a lot of space so it doesn't look all together because they're going to be looking at it also. 
So that's the planner I've been using. Like I said, it's the Ultimate Homeschool Planner. And I'll talk a little bit about why I now have the confidence to um, kind of uh, do my own thing with what I want to do with it. I think I will keep this layout and it's been really hard to find uh, planners that have both of these fields uh, blank because I do having like having it opened up and laid out for them to both be able to see on each side of their desk what uh, they're going to be doing. And it's a dual or th uh, three times purpose uh, planner and they've been very nice about uh, keeping it neat and tidy. So I also have it for posterity and it's not ruined. So that's how I've used uh, this homeschool planner this last year. All right, so let's talk about the reasons why I'm looking for something uh, different uh, uh, for planning my homeschool. Basically, I discovered that I'm a minimalist when it comes to planners, or at least homeschool planners. Uh, I, used my, I use my phone for my personal planning, and I know that for homeschool, I like just having something on hand. And as you saw, um, we use it also for my girls as students, so I need something that's hard copy for our homeschool planning. And I like the layout, like I explained. Uh, what I didn't like is that, well, I just want the weekly pages and the monthly pages. Uh, I wish I would have used these character goals, academic goals, pages, and actually the resource list. I did a separate thing in their binder, so I don't need that. And then in the beginning of each month, or at the end of each month, I can't remember. There's like a Bible plan, battle plan, prayers, hospitality. And I'm sure that's very nice, but I just didn't fill it out. It, it just wasn't something as part of our homeschool that, that I would use. And it's a shame, but it's my reality. So I don't, I don't need the extra pages if I'm not going to do it. And there's this page with this week's memorable, memorable moments, achievements, evidences of grace. So um, I tried. I tried. Let me see if I can find. There were, yeah, I tried some pages to fill it out. And it would be wonderful to kind of uh, record those things. I'm definitely not against recording things like that. But as part of a homeschool planner, I discovered that it's not really something I'm going to use. So I would just skip that page and go into the weekly plan. So what I'm planning to do is now I have a little bit more confidence now that I've been homeschooling for a year and I am going to try to do kind of like a, a semi homemade uh, homeschool planner and kind of like get something that I like from a planner but then add in uh, my specific grid that I would like for my girls and what has worked for us. So as most things in homeschooling, one of the most wonderful things about it, you learn as you go along what works for you, what works for your kids, and definitely what works as a homeschool planner. So that's how I planned and the planner I used this past year. Hope you enjoyed it. And I would love to know what you used and any recommendations you might have and what worked for you. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.